What if I told you there's a magical but completely misunderstood place where seemingly all the smart money in the world is beginning to flow? You walk down the street, you go to a different city, and you say, my God, last time I was here five years ago, none of this was here. It's a place where people are getting wealthier like never before, where more millionaires and billionaires are being created than anywhere else on Earth. That transformation is probably the most rapid and significant, I think, in humankind ever. It will probably come as no surprise that the world's richest and most successful individuals have already discovered this miraculous place. People like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Bill Gates, George Soros, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Jim Rogers, and more. And the money being made here is incredible. I'll share how one man, for example, even found a clever way to turn $200 into a $1 million payday. In my personal opinion, I think this is a once in a many years opportunity. But here's the irony. In this land of vast new riches, money no longer exists in the traditional sense. There's never a line at the few remaining ATM machines, no one carries a wallet, and fewer still write checks or carry dollar bills, credit cards, or coins. Instead, there's a radical new type of currency exchange used to pay for everything. I don't need to carry a wallet at all. I mean, literally no cash so at all. So you don't carry any cash? No, no. I can day. live like every day full. No credit full, cards? No. no, no. You're about to see this place in person. I'm going to take you there. And as you'll see, in many ways, it's more advanced than anything you're probably familiar with. You'll see stores without employees, buses that drive themselves, facial recognition security, and a string of other new breakthroughs and trends that are light years ahead of where you live. This technology and product hunger is really unparalleled. It's, it's not seen any time anywhere else in the world and in the history. But what really sets this place apart is the money. Both the money pouring in and the money being made. There is the greatest wealth creation event in the history of the world, frankly, happening right here, right now. Now, to truly understand and take advantage of what's happening here, you really have to see this place for yourself. So I'm about to give you that opportunity as I take you there in person to show you the most misunderstood place in the world and the greatest money-making opportunity of our lifetimes. Hi, my name is Steve Sugarood. I'm a former hedge fund manager, but I'm excited today to play tour guide and take you on this incredible adventure. Right now, I'm at the Newark Airport. I left my island home in Florida early this morning, and now I'm about to hop on a plane and take you to this place where so much money is flowing, so much wealth is being created, and where you really can get a glimpse into the future. But before we go forward, you need to first step back. This is a journey that I started more than 20 years ago and have continued many times in recent years. Every time I come here, I'm even more amazed. What I've realized is there's never been a bigger distortion between perception and reality than I see in this place, right here, right now. What people think about this place is nothing even close to what it really is or what it's becoming. So what is this place that I've been talking about? Well, as you can probably tell from what you see behind me, we are in China. I'm standing on the Great Wall of China at a place called Mutanyu, roughly 50 miles north of Beijing. This section of the wall was built beginning more than 600 years ago, back in the 1300s. Isn't this place incredible? On a clear day, you can see for over 20 miles. But here's the incredible thing. China is not only radically different from the place it was 600 years ago, it is also completely different from the place it was just a generation ago, even from a political point of view. They call themselves communists, but they were probably the best capitalists in the world in 2018, 2019. California is more communist than, than China is. Massachusetts is more communist than China. And this incredible adaptation of capitalism has transformed the country in just a single generation. People who are my age, in their 40s and 50s, grew up in a very different time. 
In Beijing, I met with a successful hedge fund manager, and the stories he told me were incredible. When I was a kid, when I read book, we do not have electricity. You know, at night we I need to use candle. I heard the same story again and again as I met with some of China's most successful people. When I grew up, which was I was born in '75, and lived in China till the age of 10 in Hunan Province, which is fairly poor. But back then, everything was everyone's poor in China, and we still had to have rations, you know, like coupons really? for for meat, for eggs, for for uh, material to make clothing with. And you're lucky if you had one new outfit per have year. A coupons. Yes, exactly. Fast forward 40 years, and here is a glimpse of China today after years of lightning fast growth. Investing legend Jim Rogers has been here all along and watched that explosive growth happen firsthand. I first came here in 1984. I was terrified because. I'd been listening to American propaganda that the Chinese were evil, vicious, dangerous, bloodthirsty people. Didn't take me long to, of traveling around China to find out they're disciplined, educated, uh, ambitious, hardworking. Jim Rogers probably knows China more deeply than any other American today. When he came here in the early 80s, he traveled the entire country by motorcycle. Not once, but twice. He'll never forget what he saw. I mean, it was amazing to me. Everybody was up early, working, and they didn't stop. They worked all day and all night. They were saving, they were recycling everything. They weren't doing it to, be good right, to right. save the environment. Right. They were doing it to make money uh, in those days. And I could just see it was, it was everywhere. I could see the sense of education. I could see the ambition. I could see the, the, the sense that our children should have a better life. I mean, it was just everywhere. Peter Churchhouse is another person who has seen China like few others. He's a successful businessman who arrived in Hong Kong in 1980 and soon went on to run Morgan Stanley's Asia division. He was there long before the explosive growth of China, and he's seen it all happen firsthand. I came to Hong Kong in uh, 1980, so I've been here nearly 39 years now. I came to, uh, to help build a new town. Uh, in the new territories in Hong Kong. And uh, at that time, Shenzhen, which is the city just north of Hong Kong, uh, that, that city was not a city, it was a village of about 300,000 people. Uh, and you walked around that village, there were people, blacksmiths beating wow. charcoal implements in the street. There were no buses, no taxis, no cars. Now, it's city of 11 million people, it's the center of the biggest manufacturing conglomeration in the planet. Uh, that area now has a GDP roughly the size of Russia, slightly, slightly smaller than Spain. And that was nothing. It had nothing uh, 38 years ago. So it's that's the kind of development. potentially the highest tech company in the world. Oh, oh, oh yes. I mean, so many of the, the China and the, the European and American tech companies have their operations based in, in, in that area. Uh, 66 million people in that area right now. It's, it, it has the biggest manufacturing center in the world. It has 400 million air passengers flying through that place. So why do so few Americans know the truth about what's happening in China today? Most Americans really know what they, they know about China through the lens of, of the media. China is really going in extremely dangerous directions. This is a country that is ripping off the United States. The biggest threat, obviously, is China. So you end up having sort of a, a, a warped view on, on, on China that you know, tends to have more negative stories. And that's structural. It's not malicious. And uh, so I think a lot of Americans can be excused for having certain preconceptions about what China is like. What I tell Americans about the, the negative press, I, I think the media does it disservice. There's a lot of um, you know, m misperceptions about, around China. Uh, but what's really happening in China is this is their moment. Um, they, they are now a global power. They're the second largest economy in the world, will be the largest. The first time I came to China, uh, it was in the early 1990s, and I was in Shanghai, 
and I went to the old Shanghai Stock Exchange, which they, I went in and they said, no pictures, no pictures. At first I thought it was for security reasons, they didn't want any pictures in the stock market. But instead, I realized they didn't want people to see how dingy uh, the, the Shanghai Stock Exchange was. And uh, a couple blocks away on the Bund, I went to a meeting with a company called Shanghai Lu Zhezhui Finance and Trade Zone Development Company. They said, this is what Pudong is going to look like in a very short period of time. There was nothing there. So how you could go from essentially nothing in Pudong to Manhattan in 10 years, I, I said, there's no way, this is impossible. This, is, this would never happen. And I've never been more wrong about anything in the investment world in my life. The changes that I saw from the early 90s uh, for the, over the next 10 years were extraordinary and the pace of change has never stopped. One of the reasons why things happen so much faster here than what we're used to at home is because China is still in the midst of what some economists describe as their economic takeoff phase. This is the process in which the majority of the working population moves from agricultural jobs to tech and industry and moves from the countryside to the cities. Brendan Ahern is a 20-year Wall Street veteran who left the largest global asset manager to help start a business that makes it easier for Americans to invest in China. Brendan meets regularly with government regulators, banks, insurance companies, and businesses. I don't know anyone who has a deeper understanding of China's financial system than Brendan. I met with him in Beijing. China has urbanized in a very, very big way. In 1980, only 20% of the population lived in cities. Today, it's over 50% and it'll get up to 75%. And, and that's raised hundreds of millions of people uh, out of poverty as they move into these cities, get access to proper housing, electricity, sanitation, uh, air conditioning, but also services like education and healthcare. So you've gone from 24% living in cities to 56, 58% living in cities. That's going to go to 75% wow. in the next 10 years. So we're going to see another 130, 150 million people move to the cities in China over the next 10 or 12 years. They need to be housed. Who's going to do it? They're going to want to own their own housing. So that's a big growth sector. And get this, the big movement towards cities and manufacturing that has taken place over 22 years in China took roughly 120 years in Britain and 80 years in America. Here, it's basically all happened in just one generation. I know it's probably no surprise to you to learn that China has advanced rapidly over the past few decades and millions of people have moved out of poverty into the middle class and even into millionaire status. But here's the thing. What Americans don't realize is this. China is no longer simply a nation that produces cheap t-shirts and knockoffs. Wang Hao is the head of Sigma China. Sigma is the world's largest independent camera lens manufacturer headquartered in Japan. In the, in the past, made in China, this label means the low value, low value added services, low quality products. And some people just think China is a, a assembly factory because we, don't, we didn't have any key technologies. So the only weapon we could use is the large population and the low labor costs. But now things are quite different now. So we are moving forward with the backup of government, I will say, sometimes, moving forward to the upstream of the value chain. My view about China was 15 years out of date. You know, I expected to come to China and see bicycles, to see people uh, just crowded in the subways. And I saw that. I mean, there are many, many different Chinas. But I also saw a lot of wealth. I saw a lot of passion, a lot of energy, and, and just a much more modern society than I ever expected. And China eventually became my life. James Early is another American who was quick to recognize the opportunity in China today. He's the former director of research at one of the world's largest independent financial research firms. People are missing everything that's going on here, how fast things are moving. In many ways, the country has become more sophisticated and advanced than anything we're used to in America, which is why China is creating more millionaires than anywhere else on Earth, and why so much money is flooding in. Let me show you one example of what I mean. One of the first things you notice when you move about in China is that almost no one, including street vendors and even homeless beggars, use cash anymore. 
Regular money, as most of us know it, has simply disappeared. I almost forgot how fast growing of the mobile internet and online payment. Roughly like two or three years ago, I have to you know, carry a big wallet with a lot of changes. So you have to pay like cash or credit cards whenever you go. You have to withdraw cash, you know, where you, you know, have no cash available, you have to find the ATM machines. But right now for here, you know, in Beijing, not just in Beijing, even in my hometown, um, I don't need to carry a wallet at all. I mean, literally no cash at so all. So you, you don't carry any cash? No, no. I can day. live like every day for- No credit for even, cards? No. no, no, no credit card, no cash. Even for, for a full year, it's, you know, I don't need any cash at all. The only thing concerns me is the battery of my mobile yeah, that's phone. Great. Yes. Yeah. So but, if your battery dies, you don't have any money. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's, yeah. that's right. Bob Van Dyke is the CEO of Naspers, one of the biggest technology investors in the world. Today, Naspers owns a huge share of one of China's biggest tech firms, and they've helped build tech companies in more than 120 countries. I met with Bob at his office in Amsterdam. Where, where typically now you check into to a hotel, you put your credit card down, and um, you, you go through a registration. Like in, in China, you show up with your phone, they scan a QR code that is, or code that's on your phone, and they'll have your complete reservation there, they'll have your credit card details and, and your check-in procedures done. And, and interestingly, it, it goes as far, like if you travel in, in parts of China now, in Beijing, for example, you want to pay with a credit card, they don't accept your credit card. They, they insist on being paid by, by mobile phone. The other day I was in Beijing and I was trying to buy an ice cream. She was a 19-year-old, I mean, young woman, and she couldn't sell me an ice cream because I had money. I had yeah. been Yeah. She couldn't take money. Uh, I, I, you have to do it on your phone. Oh, yeah. Everything is on. I wish I were buying a Mercedes because she gave me the ice cream in the end. Oh, really? She felt yeah. so sorry for this poor foreigner who couldn't. All he had was money. No. I mean, uh, the many things in China are, are ahead of the U.S. Again, I don't like saying it, Steve. I'm, I'm an American. My kids are Americans. My wife is American. But I have to face reality. And the Tencent, Alibaba, I mean, you know the names as well as I do. These are not little guys in the backyard somewhere. Right. These are major, gigantic powerhouses built on technology. Lei Chung is business TV anchor for CGTN in China and a former China correspondent for CNBC. No, I don't see any money changing hands here. I just see these uh, signs. Exactly. It's so convenient. Um, so so literally, is there any money changing hands at all? Very little, I think. Um, you'd have to be living under a rock to not have WeChat, to not have Alipay, because uh, the blue is for Alipay and the green is for WeChat, and there's a constant battle to see who has more market share in the online or offline space. Online, because of Taobao, Alipay definitely, but offline, because everyone uses WeChat as you know, social messaging and every, just about everything else, WeChat Pay has an advantage. WeChat, Alipay, Taobao, what are these names that Lei is talking about? WeChat is the most powerful social media platform in China with over a billion users. It's like Facebook, but on steroids. You can use it not only for communicating with friends and family, but for business dealings, for setting up doctor's appointments or dinner reservations, for paying bills, even for paying your taxes. Taobao is the largest e-commerce website in the world, bigger than Amazon, and Alipay is another mobile payment app, which, with WeChat Pay, are the two most popular apps in China for paying for everything with your mobile phone. It's amazing. Every time I come to China, I see fewer coins and bills. So I asked Lei Chung about the virtual disappearance of all types of physical money. So how long has this been, though? I, I mean, because I was here just a few years ago. And people and, still had coins and notes? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as little as five years ago, this uh -huh. didn't exist. Well, and, I mean, no, it was five not, years. It's a long time in China. <laughs> right, and yeah. today, I mean, do you use do you use cash for anything? Very, very little. I mean, yeah. Do you carry cash? On no, a no. Basis? I mean, you know, I've got my produce here. I've got my sunglasses, and uh, I've got my phone. And this is why even pickpockets are big, are becoming unemployed in China because they <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. steal phones because everyone's holding them. They can't steal money anymore. Nobody carries money. Right. And that is what is leading this new cashless society. You can see it in action everywhere, and many times it's paired with other really interesting new technologies. All right, it's lunchtime in Beijing, so I want to take you to one of the most unique places you've ever seen.
So here's what's unique about this place. There are no servers at the tables. All of your food travels down all of these tracks, goes right in front of you at the individual table. Let's get started and order us a burger. This is the way it goes. We'll find uh, the, the American burger there. Check out, continue to payment. Select WeChat. Hold up the QR code right, right uh, here. Now we just wait for our burger. And there's my burger. So, so I, I would say a, a great example of a technology that, that we, we think is, is coming uh, to fruition everywhere is, is using mobile phone to sell used goods. I think uh, in America, Craigslist is, is something that everybody knows and um, I think has worked well in the past, but it's, it's something that requires a bit of work to, um, to sell your item. Now we've come with, uh, with a business like LetGo, which we're a big investor in, to the point where you basically just need to point your mobile phone camera at stuff you don't want to own anymore. And just by pushing a single button, you know, the phone will take a picture, it will recognize what it is you want to sell, it will suggest a price for what you want to sell, and it will immediately post it um, on, uh, on the web, which gives people a, a huge audience with absolutely zero effort to sell their, their used goods. This trend, of course, is proliferating worldwide, but nowhere is it more prevalent than in China. Jonathan Crane is an American entrepreneur who got his start bringing the world's most popular music acts like the Rolling Stones, Whitney Houston, and Beyonce to China roughly 20 years ago. He explains the incredible transformation he saw take place in just a few years. Doing business in China, what you immediately see is that uh, things move very quickly over there. People um, are, are very fast at innovation. And, and also adoption is, is much faster in China uh, than anywhere else in the world. Um, an example is we had a ticketing company, and when we started that ticketing company, we were, it was probably 2004, um, and it was a cash society still. We then saw in 2005, 2006, people were starting to use debit cards. Okay, so instead of having to have lots of cash around, you use the debit card, which was convenient. And then w within two years from there, we started doing mobile ticketing. So really within four or five years, we went from cash delivery to mobile ticketing. Um, and that the and, and the adoption was uh, was was incredible that was happening across China. This trend will soon reshape America too. This is all just a preview of how it will play out. Brian Takango has been traveling across Asia to research and invest in local businesses since 1999. He's got a remarkable track record of finding future blue chip companies when they are just still small firms. I met with Brian recently in Hong Kong. Companies like Alibaba, like JD.com, uh, companies like uh, Bingo Box, for example, that now have 300 cashless convenience stores in China, and you just go in, and there's no cashier there. You just walk in and scan your app, and you get your stuff, you scan it in this uh, table, and then you just walk out with your goods. I mean, and it's all, it's all being done through artificial intelligence. It's all being done through uh, the internet and these wireless payment methods. I went to one of these employee-less stores in Shanghai. All right, Steve, we're coming out of the subway here in suburban Shanghai. This is a middle-class area. This is not fancy. This is not cutting edge. This is just average China. But you can do a lot of things, including visit an unmanned store just with your face. So inside, it's got really the same stuff you'd find in a, in a 7-Eleven. We're the only people in here. You don't need any person to run this store. And yet it's also safer, Steve, than you'd expect because everything in this store is connected to my face, which is connected to my WeChat account, which is connected to my Chinese bank account. So whatever damage I do here, all comes back to me at the end of the day. Here you go, sir. I'm just gonna push this button and we scoot right in. All we do, we set this guy down. I'm gonna show my face. I'm not proud of that picture, but uh, it'll work. I'm gonna scan this QR code of my WeChat app. And simple as that. No employees. No employees. Took just a few, probably faster checkout than if we had employees. Here's your coat, by the way. Okay, thank you. So that's the future, right here in China.
So one of the things that I think is, is really transforming people's lives is how people use WeChat uh, in China. So for example, when people decide to meet some friends for, for dinner, they typically would invite them via WeChat because they're obviously in their contacts. Then they would send, the, the reservation would happen through WeChat because the restaurant they want to go to is a contact as well and they have their booking system integrated in, in WeChat. So then they show up at, at the restaurant at the same time the ordering, actually the menu of the restaurant will be embedded in WeChat and they online order. So there will be no way to taking orders, but everybody orders on their mobile phone. In the end, the check also gets sent to the mobile phone and people actually can choose to pay with their integrated um, TenPay uh, option. So the waiter only brings the food and everything else automatically um, gets done through the, through the WeChat app. These technologies have even changed the way people buy cars. Get this, you can now reserve a test car on your phone, then pick it up at what is essentially a giant vending machine for new cars by BMW, Ford, and Volvo, and then drive it around all you want, test it for the next three days for less than $50. The thing you need to understand is that it's not just about making payments on your phone or getting rid of physical cash. This development creates hundreds and hundreds of new business ideas. This is the future for us in America, but it's all unfolding right now in real time here in China. Kevin Liu studied at Cornell University. Today, he's an equity strategist at CICC, the largest investment bank in China. Kevin is part of what is widely considered to be the best equity research team in the country, and we met up in Beijing. Back to 2006, it's roughly just over something like 1% in China uh, it, with regard to like mobile penetration. In 2006, 1% yeah. of Chinese people had mobile internet. Today, it's at least 50%. At least. At yes. least, yes. At least. My life is kind of, a, you know, tied, clo very closely tied with my phone. Today, the amount of money the Chinese spend on e-commerce is 42% of the world's total. That means the value of China's e-commerce transactions is now larger than the value of the e-commerce transactions from France, Germany, the UK, and the US combined. This is why the money is flowing to China and why more millionaires are being created here than anywhere else in the world. Everyone everywhere uses their mobile phone to pay for everything. Food, train tickets, plane tickets, tolls, clothing, fast food, everything with their mobile phone. In fact, on our most recent trip, we tried to spend a few hundred dollars buying souvenirs in a Shanghai bookstore, but they no longer accepted credit cards. What we often look at is, is what are the, the size, what is the size of the potential user group we have? And um, for example, the number of internet users in, in China is rapidly approaching a billion. And those are numbers that, that even for a huge, a huge market like the US, they, they dwarf the, the very impressive numbers of, of the US. And, and I think that in time, as these populations become connected, uh, wealthier presents a fantastic investment opportunity. Things have changed so fast in China over the last 30 years from nothing, from a, uh, from a very backwards country. Now people are living lives that a lot of people, even in the U.S., couldn't even imagine. Okay, so from a cashless society to unmanned stores and waiterless restaurants to mobile commerce beyond our imagination, clearly this is not how most Americans perceive China. And these are not stories you typically see reported in the mainstream press. However, this is the reality in China today. But hold on, you might be saying to yourself, I thought this was a communist country. This doesn't sound like communism to me. Well, as Jim Rogers said earlier, California and Massachusetts are probably more communist than China. And the truth is, while the Chinese call themselves communists, they are actually among the best capitalists on earth. And this is part of what's caused such a radical distortion between perception and reality in China today. China isn't a communist country anymore. It's not a Marxist uh, communist regime like it was under Mao Zedong. Uh, it has advanced much more into what you might call a form of autocratic capitalism. It's still a dictatorship, it's still an autocracy, it's not a true democracy by any means, but think about it, most of the economy is now run by private sector interests, by private companies who are doing their own thing, investing, doing what they want to do. Uh, families can 
pretty much live where they choose these days. They can get educated the way they want. They can own their own home. They can invest in stock markets, invest in all sorts of products. Still a lot of restrictions. Nowhere near as free as it is in the West, perhaps. But it's certainly not a communist country in the way that uh, Marxism says that all resources must be owned by the state. That is not the case in China anymore. I mean, this is a country where since 1978, 1980, when Deng Xiaoping started the open door policy, a country where GDP growth has skyrocketed, where life expectancy has skyrocketed, where quality of life skyrocketed. Everything has gone up, up, up. This is an economic miracle. You know, those are measurable facts in a communist country brought about by capitalism. It's almost ridiculous to call China a communism country because the government is the biggest capitalist in the world. I never look at China as, as a communist nation. I, I don't even use, ever use the word. Um, you, know, you know, China is very capitalistic, okay? You, you, there's a middle class forming there. You have uh, hope, I go back to the word hope, um, that you, you can be, you know, uh, you know uh, low income and, and become a billionaire. The truth is the government in China works very differently than most Americans think. In short, they are doing everything they can to foster innovation, entrepreneurship, and personal wealth. Here's a great example of how the Chinese government has worked with private businesses to develop something that is light years ahead of what we have in America. We're getting on the high-speed train from Beijing to Shanghai. experiencing another of the, the wonders of Chinese technology and innovation. We're traveling on the bullet train going 350 kilometers an hour right now. That's 250 miles an hour. And uh, one of the common things I hear from Americans is, ah, oh, well, you know, China makes inferior goods, the technology's inferior. And, but meanwhile, everyone's using their Chinese-made iPhone. And, and uh, I think it's, it's fair to have American pride, um, which, I, which I do myself. Uh, but I think we also need to be honest about, about the reality. I mean, here we are, again, traveling 250 miles an hour using our Chinese technology, and uh, this is reality in China today. China's high-speed train system is a government-private sector collaboration that was built in about a third the time it could have been built in America, Europe, or anywhere else in the world. Jerry Liu spent more than a decade at Morgan Stanley and Templeton Asset Management. Today, he's the founding partner of Everpine Capital, a private equity firm that helps companies with cutting edge technologies take advantage of the Chinese markets. We met with Jerry in Shanghai. Once again, if you look at the high-speed rail network uh, in China, I mean, even you, you roll back by like 15 years, it literally did not exist. They built everything from scratch, from scratch, into the, the longest, fastest, most extensive logistics infrastructure in the whole world. I think the high-speed rail network um, is, is really changed that country and allowing people to move um, you know, in and out of cities quickly, but also be able to have access to um, major cities to work, but but be allowed to live in you know uh, you know second and third tier cities for more affordable housing. If if you go to the Hongqiao station in Shanghai at 6:30 in the morning, you will have difficulty getting in. It's so packed in and out. We're talking about tens of thousands of people traveling into that station, dismissing themselves to everywhere else in the country, starting their business on Monday morning. This is how charged China is today, you know. You don't see that in Grand Central Station. <laughs> you don't see that anywhere else in the world. This is how driven China is. And it's like the inter interstate highway back, back in the 50s. I mean, can you imagine America without the interstate highway system? Can you imagine the inland states? What would they be right now? That's what's happening in China right now. I mean, with the rollout of the infrastructure from zero expressways 30 years ago, they now have 116,000 kilometers of expressways, 260,000 kilometers of highways. 
from 99 airports, they now have almost 300 airports and they're building dozens more. You know, when you come to China and see, you, know, you fly into these brand new airports, you ride these bullet trains going you know, 250 miles an hour, you know, you pay for things just using your phone. You don't carry cash or even credit cards. You know, you really do understand what's happening here is, is different and it's potentially only in its infancy and is only gonna get even bigger. What I think you have to understand is that the leaders here are not trying to establish a communist system where everyone is equal. This is not at all like Russia or North Korea. Instead, they are trying to design the most effective capitalist and entrepreneurial system in the world. And they've proven pretty darn good at it so far. There's no better example of the radical transformation that has taken place here with the government's help than the amazing place I showed you earlier, the city of Shenzhen. As we told you, in 1979, only 300,000 people lived here, but Shenzhen became China's first special economic zone. It's gone from a backwater village to the most important tech manufacturing center on the planet, with a population that's about the same size as America's two biggest cities, LA and New York, put together. It's home to 1,500 research and scientific institutions. It's not just making t-shirts and training shoes, it's some of the highest tech companies in the world. Shenzhen is one of the big reasons why, in mid-2018, for the first time ever, Chinese companies attracted more venture capital than American companies. And although the mainstream press almost never tells this story, the money is clearly flowing to China. When you take a quick look at what's happening in Shenzhen, it's easy to see why. Today, just this one Chinese city, which most Americans have never even heard of and basically didn't even exist 40 years ago, is home to the world's third biggest internet company, it's bigger than Facebook or Netflix, the world's biggest maker of drones, DJI, the world's biggest maker of plug-in electric cars, no, it's not Tesla, it's BYD, and the world's biggest telecom equipment company. It's Huawei, which is three times bigger than Sweden's Ericsson. Many, including the Wall Street Journal, have referred to Shenzhen as Silicon Valley of the East. But in many ways, it's actually much more advanced and more sophisticated. Shenzhen has the world's largest metro line and the world's first all-electric bus fleet. Incredibly, its 16,000 buses are all electric and make no noise or pollution. This single city has built more skyscrapers in a single year than the entire United States during that same time. And this is a critical point. Today in Shenzhen, it's not a place where businesses simply copy ideas and products. It's a new reality where China is quickly becoming one of the most innovative economies on the planet. Kaiser Kuo knows both America and China intimately. He's a former director at Baidu, China's largest internet search engine. He's also a former member of the Tang Dynasty, China's first heavy metal rock band which formed 30 years ago. Today, Kaiser lives in America, where he helps run a China-focused media firm. I met up with Kaiser in Beijing. You know, there was a joke, even among people who worked in the, in the, in the industry, we said, you know, sea to sea, which of course in, Ameri in, in English means, you know, uh, consumer to consumer. Sea to sea means coffee to China. There certainly were a, a lot of companies that were simple clones of American counterparts. Uh, what's really interesting, though, is how quickly that whole narrative shifted. Shenzhen, the city that had blacksmiths beating charcoal implements in the streets less than 40 years ago, is now the electronics and hardware capital of the world. It's the most sophisticated and advanced place on earth when it comes to building new electronics and hardware. While Silicon Valley has chosen to focus on software, Shenzhen has a major advantage in all of the world's actual equipment. That's why Apple has set up its latest R&D center here. IBM is here. So is Oracle, Cisco, Nvidia, Emerson Electronics, Amazon, Samsung, Microsoft, Intel, Qualcomm, Tesla, DuPont, Whirlpool, Mattel, Philips Lighting, Radio Shack, Texas Instruments, 3M, Broadcom, Black & Decker, Toshiba, GoPro, and dozens more of the world's top technology firms. They've chosen to open up shop in Shenzhen. Airbus, the world's largest plane maker, just chose Shenzhen for an innovation center. Uh, General Motors makes more in China than it makes in America. Apple makes more in China than it makes in America. There are many major, major American companies, they know. 
right. General Motors knows that, that China is a gigantic market for high quality products. The reason these companies are here is because they have access to the world's most advanced supply chain for manufacturing and distribution. You can get everything from raw materials to computer components right here in Shenzhen. It has become really the epicenter for all global high-tech manufacturing. It is where the supply chain sits. I'm not in Palo Alto calling across time zones, using online tra translation, trying to, to talk to these things that, you know, where the back and forth is taking weeks. Right. It's an immediacy that is a tremendous advantage. And when the United States stopped manufacturing things, I think it surrendered a lot of its advantage in that way. Edith Young is a general partner of venture capital firm called 500 Startups. When asked how to explain Shenzhen to Americans, she says, I would tell them it's a Silicon Valley for hardware. She says Americans have no idea what's going on in China. There are so many areas where China already exceeds the U.S. Right now and for the foreseeable future, many of the world's biggest and most important breakthroughs are going to be coming out of this city that most Americans have still never heard of. One of the most successful of Shenzhen's recent startups is a company called DJI, which makes affordable commercial drones. The company has a 1,500-person research and development team. Today, they have 70% of the global drone market. They'll be going public soon, but Americans have never heard of them. All they know is GoPro. But DJI's drones are far superior to GoPros in almost every way. The tech site Gizmodo, for example, recently compared the two and concluded it's practically a landslide in DJI's favor. When you look at the amazing list of new technology companies in Shenzhen, it's simply astonishing. There's a company called Beijing Genomics Institute, for example. The scientific journal Nature called it a DNA superpower after the company bought so many genomic sequencing machines that it quickly owned more than half of the world's total. China used to be known for being the best supplier of cheap pharmaceutical ingredients and knockoff pills, but today China has the second largest number of clinical trials involving biologic treatments after the United States. This is why Merck and Johnson & Johnson have innovation centers in China and why companies like Eli Lilly and many others are selling Chinese discovered drugs overseas. But again, almost no one in America knows this. It's a story that's hardly ever reported in the mainstream press. Then there's the biggest electronic automaker in the world. It's not Tesla, but a Chinese company based in Shenzhen called BYD. This company has the biggest battery factory in the world, and it already sells more electric cars every year than Tesla. BYD also has something Tesla doesn't, the backing of the world's best investor. Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway own nearly 10% of BYD. Charlie Munger is one of the world's leading proponents of investing in China. He said in a recent interview, American investors are missing out on China. It just looks too hard sitting in Omaha, but it's where they should be looking. And keep in mind, all these companies and all these innovations are all located in just one city. This is why The Atlantic magazine recently wrote, it's now becoming clear that in many respects, China has distinct advantages over Silicon Valley as it hopes to become the next nexus for innovation. I think the uh, current perception in, in America of China right now is one of very archaic perception that China is this massive sweatshop that's just constantly throwing cheap goods into America. But the reality is China is one of the most dynamic economies in the world. Okay, but what about all these impressive numbers? One of the objections to China I hear constantly is that China's economic numbers are manipulated. So I put the question to one of the most knowledgeable people on the subject. I don't trust any government numbers. America, Germany, anybody. We've all been caught lying about our numbers, and I'm sure that the Chinese numbers, or some of them, are made up too. But it doesn't matter, because I've been coming here for 34 years. You walk down the street, you go to a different city, and you say, my God, last time I was here five years ago, none of this was here. And it all happens, and it happens very quickly in China, partly because it's a one-party state, and partly they get it done. In America, it takes you years just to build a new church or a new hospital or a new school even. 
Jim, as you heard earlier, is the only man in the world who's crossed China on land three different times, twice by motorcycle and once by car. And he also has what is probably the best investing track record of all time for the work that he did during the 70s. His quantum fund delivered a 4,200% return to his investors during a time when stocks did nothing. That does not mean there won't be problems in China. America became the greatest country of the 20th century. Along the way, we had 15 depressions with a D. We had a horrible civil war. We had massacres in the streets. We had very little rule of law. You could buy and sell con you could still buy and sell congressmen, but in the 19th century, they were cheap. You could right. buy four or five for the price of one now. America had many problems along the way, but we became an astonishing success, the most successful country in the 20th century. For me, as we look at China and this potential opportunity, I think it's crucial for us to consider what we can see with our own eyes. Has China grown like crazy? And is there more wealth being created right here, right now, than any place on Earth? The answers to both of those questions are unequivocally yes. Remember, here's what Shanghai looked like in 1987. And here we are cruising around on a private yacht in the same spot today. Here's what Shenzhen looked like 30 years ago. And here's what Shenzhen looks like today. This is the really the greatest wealth creation event in, in, in the history of the world, in my view. If you look at it at the scale, we see this is uh, 1.4, maybe even 1.5 billion people because of uh, uh, undercounting who are going from literally third world conditions in 1978 when Deng Xiaoping began the open door policy to now you've got this mix of the third world still, if you go to rural China, definitely in the third world, second world, and increasingly first world, more and more and more. And that's why everybody's trying to come to the Chinese cities. That's why we're in uh, one of the fanciest hotels I've ever stayed at. You know, that's why, you know, you look out and you see Bentleys in the parking lot here, Ferraris, Porsches. Uh, that's real wealth and it's growing day by day. Sure, the government has a heavy hand in directing this economy, but one amazing thing is very clear. The Chinese government can get enormous initiatives completed in a fraction of the time it would take to accomplish these anywhere else. I showed you the most amazing bullet train system in the world already, but that's just the beginning. Right now, the Chinese government is forcing the big telecom companies to spend $180 billion over seven years to build the infrastructure for the world's largest 5G mobile network. Meanwhile, in America, 50 different states are all trying to plot their own course. Do you really want to bet against China with this type of infrastructure initiative? I sure don't. Most of the rural areas, um, they've skipped the landlines. You know, they, and my suspicion is that they're going to make the next leap into the 5G you know, faster than anywhere else in the world. Another example. In Beijing, I met with the man who designed Beijing's tallest building and helped design an area called Beijing Fun Town. This is an ultra-modern, environmentally friendly area where nearly all of the businesses are venture capital, hedge funds, private banks, asset managers, and other types of investment funds. This is what's possible here in this communist country. China is an example of a country that has gone from the Stone Ages into the 21st century over a space of 30 years. So it's, it's really a fundamental transformation of a society and an economy, which the likes of which I've never seen. I don't think anybody's seen this kind of transformation uh, in this kind of time frame anywhere in the world, not least a country with 1.3 billion people. The way I look at it is, yes, China has a thousand challenges on its hands, but so does nearly every other country in the world. And there can be absolutely no denying that the opportunities in China are far bigger than anywhere else on earth. Folks who are getting in early on these trends are making a fortune. You might be familiar with FANG, the acronym in the U.S. for Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Well, in China, there's something similar. BAT is an acronym that stands for Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. 
Uh, these are three major technology companies in China. Uh, Baidu is a search company. I think a lot of people draw analogies to Google because, of course, like Google in the United States, it's the dominant search engine here in China. Similar, similar business model and everything. Uh, Alibaba is a massive e-commerce company. It really dominates e-commerce. Tencent is a, a company that doesn't have a close analogy in the United States. It actually has derives most of its revenue from gaming and things like that. But its most famous product is a sort of all-in-one communications platform, kind of a Swiss Army knife of an app called WeChat. And it's sort of WhatsApp, Facebook, all these things sort of rolled all into one. You can pretty much do anything you need to do from buying things, from hailing taxis. They they have a WeChat account not because they are required to but because it's just so convenient for them now. I mean, their entire lives are online. They have, they have their bank statements there. They can send money to relatives halfway across the country uh, in just a few seconds. I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge benefit to them and that's why they're all online. We had the incredible opportunity to have meetings in two of Tencent's locations, first in Beijing and then also in Shenzhen at their amazing new headquarters. Well, that was amazing. We just uh, we just left Tencent, and we weren't allowed to bring you inside because of high security and everything. But really, James and I got to see the future right here at Tencent. Yeah, this place is tighter than Fort Knox. They've got high tech, cool stuff. But the thing, Steve, that you just said that struck me a minute ago is that this could have been Google. This could have been in Silicon Valley. We're locked in. We're greeted by an AI robot. Uh, we have AI facial recognition to get into the elevators that's also in use by the Chinese government, they said. And these are people working 15 hours yeah, a day. They want you to stay there, so they're working 15 hour days, but just like Google, you know, James and I played uh, ping pong, and James actually climbed the climbing wall inside there, so we weren't working hard inside there, but everyone else was. We were the only ones playing, actually, yeah, yeah but it was fun. I told you about how tech companies like Tencent and Baidu are up as much as 50,000% since 2004. But it's not just the tech firms that are soaring. Look at some of these real estate and construction firms that are making people simply extraordinary gains. China Fortune Land Development soared more than 8,000% beginning in 2003. China Overseas Land and Investment also soared roughly 8,000% beginning in the year 2000. China Resources Land soared more than 6,500% beginning in the year 2000. Country Garden Holdings soared 1,400% beginning in 2008. The list goes on and on and on. People now talk about a new crop of companies that are coming up, uh, many of them, not all of them yet, yet listed, TMD is the new ac acronym that you'll be hearing a lot about. Toutiao, which is a, uh, an AI-driven news site, which is massive. The actual company is called ByteDance, but their flag flagship product is Toutiao. Uh, Meituan is another one, which is a sort of online services platform. Uh, O2O, as it's called in Chinese, uh, with, where you can do everything from well, book seats in restaurants, order takeout, or uh, buy movie theater tickets, or get discounts on things, group buying. It's enormous. And then finally, D stands for Didi Chusin, which is like the Uber of China, but on steroids. Yeah. Kaiser mentioned a business called Meituan. It's the biggest food delivery platform in the world. You can order from thousands of restaurants on your phone and have food delivered to your door. Get this, Meituan is worth more than twice its American counterparts, Yelp, Groupon, and Grubhub combined. China has really come to a stage. Its, its technology and product hunger is really unparalleled. It's, it's not seen any time anywhere else in the world and in the history. So uh, we're talking about uh, really more than a billion people upgrading their lifestyle, pretty much catching up to U.S. and European um, style, but in a very dramatic manner. China has seen uh, technology developed very much in lockstep with its, its really rapid environmental growth. There's a, a kind of faith in the ability of technology to deliver better lives. Compare that to the United States right now, where there's a lot of anxiety about technology. This will be a rising economy. I'm not seeing you know, the market degrading itself anytime soon. I think um, it's still going full steam ahead. Uh, China is the second largest uh, economy today, and I think it will probably keep growing and become um, the biggest consumer market in the world. It will be there with or without your capital. Okay, so it's really your call. There's a saying in the financial world, 
that money flows to where it's treated best. And right now, the best place to build and grow wealth is unquestionably in China, which is why the smart money is moving here. The money being made here is like nothing we have ever seen in human history. What's crazy to me is that, despite all the evidence I've shown you, the mainstream media in America still loves to hate on China. Look at some of these recent book covers. But here's the truth. Already, the best investors from America, including our most famous and successful investor, Warren Buffett, and his business partner, Charlie Munger, are here in a big way. So are Bill and Melinda Gates, the Yale and Harvard pension funds, Goldman Sachs, Bill Gross, and by the way, speaking of millionaires and billionaires, according to the BBC and the latest figures, China is producing two new billionaires every week. That's twice as many as were created in America over the same period of time. And get this, the country recently created a million new millionaires in a single year. That's more millionaires in a single year than the total that exists in the wealthy nation of Switzerland. But it's not just individuals making huge money. There are many success stories for small businesses, too. So I, I gave you one example uh, we invested in. It's a, it's a French company. It's called iTech Care. So this is a company with a cutting edge technology that could cure glaucoma using the, uh, the ultrasonic technology. It's the only company in the world that is capable of doing that, but it was a local company. It was a French company based in Lyon. Today, we took this company to the China market, and um, it's already in, in more than 30 cities in China, and it's doing business really well. Jerry told us the money they were making in some of these individual Chinese cities is as much as they were making in all of France. And there are others making extraordinary gains as well. America's number one venture capital firm, Sequoia Capital, has even set up a division in China. They recently made more than a thousand percent return worth millions of dollars on one of their investments. And the most profitable investment in the history of the world was made here, a 500,000 percent gain in roughly 17 years. Bloomberg called it the deal of the century, and for good reason. That type of gain turns every $200 invested into more than a million dollars. That investment was made by a man named Koos Becker and his company, an investment firm called Naspers. What they did was invest in Tencent, even though most Americans had never heard of it. Again, the smart money is moving to China, simply because this is the best place to turn a small investment into a sizable fortune in the years to come. And I left the U.S. for China, where I am right now, because frankly, in all my life, I have never seen such wealth creation happening in the size and with the speed that is happening right here, right now in China. But I moved to Asia because of China. I want my children to grow up speaking Mandarin. And in their lifetime, China will be the most important country. As an American investor, I think this is the in my personal opinion, I think this is a once in a many years opportunity to dive in. You've seen the incredible new technologies and innovations coming out of China that almost no one in America knows about yet. I've told you about the huge economic tailwind of this market, how another 300 million people migrating to cities and moving into the middle class will create the biggest consumer market in history. And I've told you about how so much of the smart money is already in China. But there's a huge part of this story that I haven't even mentioned yet. In fact, it's what got me so interested in China just a few years ago and might be the most important part of this incredible story. In short, there are two enormous piles of money. I'm talking over a trillion total dollars that are about to get pushed into the Chinese stock market. This new money is absolutely 100% coming to Chinese stocks. And nothing like this has ever happened before in the history of the financial markets, not on this scale. Here's the deal. A group called MSCI, which stands for Morgan Stanley Capital International, controls where a huge portion of international money is invested. And for the first time ever, MSCI is forcing hundreds of billions of dollars from the world's biggest mutual funds, pensions, and insurance companies to be invested in local Chinese stocks. There's going to be a sea change around China because as the largest asset managers, the largest pension plans globally, they're going to be coming here for the very first time because they have to own these 
stocks, these bonds that we hold today. This process started in June of 2018. The next waves of money are scheduled to go into Chinese stocks in May and August of 2019, with even bigger moves after that. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars in total. Never in my career have I seen a way to legally front run many of the world's biggest money managers, but that's what you can do today by buying the exact same stocks they are going to be soon forced to own. This development has barely been reported in the mainstream press, but the few folks who have picked up on it understand the consequences. As the BBC reported, this is definitely a game changer. But this secret boost to the Chinese stock market won't remain a secret forever. Once these big American institutions have their money invested there, you will begin to hear them talking up the great new companies in China every chance they get. So that's one big pile of money that will soon be forced into China. The second big pile coming here could even be bigger. The Chinese government recently announced they're going to pour enormous sums, as much as a trillion dollars in the years to come, into their public pension funds to make sure there's enough money for retirees. And as the Financial Times reported, this will send a flood of cash into domestic Chinese equities. We're about to see over the next two, three, four, five, and especially 10 years, a new era in Chinese investing, and it's gonna be powerful. In total, these two new big piles of money going into the Chinese stock market will total at least a trillion dollars. And what's incredible is you can get your money there first. I'm sure I don't have to tell you what's going to happen when you essentially double the pile of money chasing the same big local Chinese stocks. The value of these businesses in the market will have only one way to go in the long term, and that's up, up, up. Again, almost no one in the mainstream press is reporting on this story. But that's great news for you and me. I've simply never seen a bigger difference between perception and reality than what we see in China today. It's both the biggest in dollar terms, but also uh, uh, just in those emotional terms. Uh, I come home from China and I try to explain to Americans, to my wife, to my mother-in-law, what I've experienced and when I explain the reality of what's going on on the ground, they still are not willing to change their extreme perception um, of, of what, they, what they think. My wife and kids never really understood China until I took them there in person. And that's the whole reason I created this film, so you could hopefully understand this amazing opportunity without having to go there in person. Look. While it's going to get harder and harder to make money in America in the years to come, the money that will be made in China is going to dwarf everything else on the planet. I think we'll see a time in the next few years where the entire Chinese stock market at least doubles in value in as little as 18 months. And that's just in the short term. Over the long term, this entire market is going to soar 500% or more, and the best companies in China are going to return thousands of percent gains. Investing in China's best businesses today is very much like investing in Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Google before they became household names. These are truly life-changing investment opportunities, which are extraordinarily cheap to purchase today especially compared to similar investments in the United States. The U.S. is making all-time highs. The Chinese market is down 60%. Now, I don't know if they taught you at school, but you're supposed to buy low and right. sell high. Right. So for me, something that's down 60% might be more attractive than something making all-time highs. Investing in China is an incredible deal right now. Very few investors are paying attention, Plus, the growth potential in China is radically bigger, and China has some of the most innovative companies in the world. Also, more than a trillion dollars will be forced into Chinese stocks in the next few years because of the MSCI decision and the national pension catch-ups. Any one of these factors would be reason enough to invest a significant sum in China in the years to come. But when you add all these factors together, it's a perfect storm for making new money. I am extremely bullish on where China is going to be going. Uh, I think there are a lot of things, a lot of very strong tailwinds that we still see. 
Warren Buffett is the most famous and one of the most successful investors in America over the past 60 years. One of my favorite Buffett quotes is from his 1996 shareholder letter because it summarizes the opportunity before us in China today perfectly. Buffett says, your goal as an investor should simply be to purchase at a rational price a part interest in an easily understandable business whose earnings are virtually certain to be materially higher 5, 10, and 20 years from now. Over time, you will find only a few companies that meet these standards. So when you see one that qualifies, you should buy a meaningful amount of stock. I never thought we'd see a moment like this in my entire career. We have a moment where China is the world's second largest economy, and it's battling with Japan uh, in, to be the world's second largest stock market. But meanwhile, nobody is invested in Chinese stocks. And when I say nobody, I mean American institutional investors, global investors, even the local Chinese are not really invested in Chinese stocks. I think China has huge investment potential. As I tell my customers all the time, there are always plenty of reasons not to invest somewhere. Yes, there are many reasons not to invest in China today, but think about this. There were many reasons not to invest in U.S. stocks back in 2009. In fact, back then, the reasons were way more compelling than they are to not invest in China today. But the U.S. market tripled back then while most people simply sat on the sidelines. The same thing is going to happen over the next few years with China. There are plenty of reasons not to invest, but the big picture is clear. China has lifted 600 million people out of poverty over the last 20 years or so, and they've been brought into middle-income status. And in the next 20 years, China will become a high-income status country. So that transformation is probably the most rapid and significant, I think, in humankind ever. You've seen other little countries, they get an oil rush, you know, uh, in the Middle East you get oil comes through and uh, oil prices jump up and suddenly they're very wealthy, but it's, it's a, a, a 10, 20 million people. This is over a billion people and it's not stopping here. There's still a long way to go. You know how people today are kicking themselves for missing out on Amazon, Google, Facebook and more? Well, in five years or so, most of those same people are going to look back and say, man, how could I have not seen this huge opportunity in China in the fastest growing economy in the world with many of the best and fastest growing businesses on the planet? At this point, Steve, I've essentially gone all in on China in my career. I've invested not just my money, but my entire career in this country. I, I think you'd be crazy not to participate in it, even in a small way. You don't need to jump in boots and all, but I, I think this is a, a growth story that's going to run for at least another 10 or 20 years. Imagine if you had not invested in the U.S. in the last 30 years. What would you have missed out on? That's exactly what you will miss out if you don't invest in China today. I hope you enjoyed this journey through China and a look at the incredible opportunities that it presents us today. You know, I'm sure that some people are going to be very angry at me for making this film and encouraging people to learn more about China and to ultimately take an investment stake there too. In fact, I'm sure some people will call me un-American. But I hope that you're open-minded enough to see what's really going on. The truth is, China and America are the future together. It's not going to be, and it doesn't have to just be, just one or the other. And the simple reality is, many places in China are more advanced and more sophisticated than any place in America. But many of America's biggest breakthroughs and trends of tomorrow are taking place in China right before our eyes today. Plus, China's economy is likely to double in size in the years to come, and that's not likely going to happen anytime soon in America. Yes, there are a thousand reasons not to invest in China today, but I think anyone who takes an unbiased look will see that the positives far outweigh the negatives. There's no doubt in my mind, the massive difference between perception and reality in China today has created the greatest money-making opportunity of our lifetimes. But this story won't remain a secret for long. I hope you take advantage of it before the rest of the world catches on. To learn more about the specific steps you can take today, 
to have the opportunity to cash in on what Dr. Steve Sugaru describes as the best money-making opportunity of our lifetimes, go to www.newmoneymovie.com slash invest. Dr. Shigarud has spent more than 20 years helping hundreds of thousands of Americans figure out how to safely and dramatically grow their wealth. In his investment research, Dr. Shigarud shows you exactly which stocks he recommends you buy, when to buy, and when to sell to have the opportunity to maximize your gains. He'll show you the absolute best way to take advantage of the opportunity in China today. You can access the best of his investment recommendations through any regular U.S. brokerage account. Dr. Sugarud has already helped hundreds of people make a small fortune in China. Just look at a small sampling of the gains from more than 600 letters he recently received from his subscribers. There's simply no one more qualified in the financial world today to help you learn how to take advantage of this enormous opportunity and trend taking place in China. Best of all, today you can save half off the regular subscription rate for Dr. Sugarud's investment research recommendations, and you can try his work totally risk-free for 30 days. If you're not happy, or if you change your mind for any reason, no problem. You can get a full refund by calling or email his US-based team. To learn more and to get access to Dr. Sugarud's top China investment recommendations in a matter of minutes, simply go to www.newmoneymovie.com/invest.